Hello, welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit ComlexFlashcards.com. That's ComlexFlashcards.com. Again, please visit ComlexFlashcards.com for additional information on preparing for the Comlex board exam. Today's topic is going to be injectable contraceptives. Let's start with Depo Provera. This is a progestin only Depo Medroxyprogesterone Acetate. And usually, the way this works is by altering the endometrial lining, thickening the cervical mucus, and it blocks the L8 surge, preventing ovulation. In terms of its advantages, well, the major advantage is that it's an IM injection and it's maintained for 14 weeks. It's extremely effective, the failure rate is 0.3%, and the efficacy is not altered by varying weight or use of concurrent medications, nor does it cause sickness or diarrhea. There's also decreased um, anemia and dysmenorrhea in patients who use Depo. The periods are basically lighter or there are no periods and each shot works for three months and it's also safe with breastfeeding. So those are some of the key advantages. In addition, it does not produce serious side effects of estrogen so it's okay to be used in patients with diabetes, lipid disorders, complicated migraines. Um, and so this is a very key point here. Um, again, disadvantages are that it's associated with irregular bleeding and weight gain, decreases in bone mineral density, but that's reversible, and also there's 50% um, of the patients infertile for 10 months after the last injection, so you know that's one of the things. In addition, um, it involves injections and remembering to visit the doctor every three months. There's persistent irregular bleeding, delayed return to fertility, weight gain about 5 pounds in the first year, and possibly depression. So some side effects of Depo-Provera include edema, nausea, hot flashes, weight gain, headache, rashes. It can cause decreased mineral bone density, but this is not associated with increased fracture risk and it's transient and reversible. The contraindications to Depo, while well, known or suspected pregnancy, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, or missed abortion, known or suspected malignancy of the breast, active thrombophlebitis, and liver dysfunction. Let's talk about the contraceptive patch OrthoEvra. Now, you can apply this once weekly for three weeks, okay? Placebo is one patch free week during which withdrawal bleeding occurs. It blocks the L8 surge, thickens the cervical mucus, and alters the endometrial lining. Now, the efficacy is similar to oral contraceptives, 0.3% failure rate, and generally it's taken once a week regimen and it's easier for some patients to follow than the daily pill. It's less effective, however, in women who weigh greater than 90 pounds. So that's one of the key things to remember. The side effects include cardiovascular disease, um, and there's also um, contraindications, cardiovascular risks, which are similar to the OCPs. You may also have application site reactions. One to two patches per year um, may fall off and there's likely increased risk of a venous thromboembolism compared to OCPs. So here are the two key things you want to remember is that if a patient is overweight above 90 kg and if they have increased risk of thromboembolism, especially smokers and women older than 35 years of age, then this orthoevra patch may not be the best idea. Now let's review the vaginal ring. This is also called ethyvinyl acetate ring and it's consisted of ethanol estriol plus ethanorgestrel and it's inserted intravaginally for three weeks. It's a combined low-dose progestin and an estrogen vag vaginal ring. The advantages here are that it can make the periods more regular, can improve acne, and it's used continuously for three weeks, then one week without the ring. And it's safe to use continuously to skip periods. Again, the side effects contraindications are similar to OCPs. And for ring specific, 2.5% of women will have one event per year where the ring falls out. And it can cause leucorrhea and vaginitis in some cases. So those are the major disadvantages. Now let's review intrauterine devices, specifically the copper um, 
T380A device and the Marina device. So with IUDs, there's several things that you want to make sure that you understand. These are mainly for those patients who are at low risk for STDs, okay? And the advantage is that it's inserted into the endometrial cavity, left in place for several years. But keep in mind that the copper IUD causes migration of white blood cells into the uterine cavity, resulting in phagocytite of the spermatozoa. That's how it works. And the copper ion seem to have a direct toxic effect on the spermatozoa. As we mentioned, it can be placed in for 10 years, bleeding commonly occurs, and it increases flow 50% to regular periods and 77 to 12% removed for bleeding and or pain at one year. The Mirena um, is basically effective for up to five years. It results in lighter periods. It's less cramping associated with this. There's immediate fertility with removal and it's safe with breastfeeding. However, this can cause spotting for up to six months and it's associated with acne and there's also a possible risk of uterine rupture. In terms of the copper IUD, you want to remember that you know it's effective for 10 years, so it's long term. There's immediate fertility and it's safe with breastfeeding. The disadvantages include an increased risk of PID, the risk of perforation, and cramping and pain at the insertion site. It may also be expelled unnoticed and there's no STD protection. It requires counseling history of pelvic exam and a screen for gonorrhea, chlamydia, and pap smear. Those are key points that you want to remember before you prescribe a patient an IUD. The contraindication include a high risk for STDs, current cervicitis, and known suspected pregnancy, uterine anat anatomy interfering with placement. Also, for Mirena only, you want to be aware of a contraindication that's current DVT, and for copper only, allergy to copper or Wilson's disease. That was an instant review of the various contraceptive methods. Um, please visit complexflashcards.com for additional lectures on contraceptive methods such as oral contraceptive pills, progestin pills, um, male condoms, and other lectures on various topics in obstetrics and gynecology. Good luck in your preparation and subscribe to our blog at complexflashcards.com. Thank you.